We all know that cinema has moved over from celluloid to digital in the past two years and with more and more screens all over the world converting to this new format, what happens to film? Going from 35mm film projection to digital is all good and well, but what are the real impacts on the legacy of cinema as we know it? With both Sturkenikor and New Metro going completely digital in their projection, how does it affect the independence and those individuals still working with film on the ground? So in a follow-up story to last week's news about the Labia Theatre in Cape Town, we sent our Cape Town crew out to chat to owner Ludi Kraus and get a feel from the patrons about their passions for cinema and the migration from 35mm to digital delivery. They show a lot of art films, they show also, you know, what you call them, like um, esoterical films and they always have very interesting films. I would just not want it to go down. <laughs> yeah, much more laid back than other places. Um, it's great that you can get a beer here. Um, yeah, and I suppose it is just like in the heart of the city and it's got a nice feel. Films on celluloid are no longer being made. Uh, it is virtually impossible now to obtain a film on celluloid. Also, components for the old film projectors are no longer available. Something very similar as the xenon lamp, which lights up the picture, you can't get xenon lamps anymore. Nobody makes them anymore. Nobody imports them anymore. There's no market for them anymore. There's actually no choice. One actually is forced to convert from film to digital. All the films now are being uh, made in a digital form and are being presented in a digital form. So if one wishes to continue with the cinema, one needs to have the new equipment. I grew up with film. I've been involved with film, say, for 45 odd years. I'm nostalgic about film. I'm nostalgic about the old film projectors. Uh, I'm, I'm Nostalgic about that little bit of imperfection on the screen, uh, uh, the light beam through the porthole, the sound of the old projectors. But having said that, now that I've seen digital in action and I've seen the improvement in picture and in sound and the accessibility of, of content, I was very quickly converted. Digital comes at a great cost uh, to install one cinema with uh, a new digital projector. You also, of course, need upgraded sound, etc. It, it's a good half a million rand. We've been very fortunate that uh, friends of the Labia, patrons of the Labia, actually took the initiative to launch a crowdfunding campaign uh, with the hope of raising sufficient funds to pay for the conversion to digital and also to rejuvenate the, the premises generally. A lot of uh, cinemas in America, in particular also with a long history, were saved uh, through crowdfunding and the conversion was funded through crowdfunding. Here in South Africa we are being funded through Thunder Fund, they are running the campaign. So it's www.thunderfund.com forward slash the Labia. The Labia is, is unique, it has over the years become a bit of a, sort of an institution but I think in a small way, the Labia plays a very important part in keeping the medium of film alive. It always worries me that most cinemas out there all show the same films and that so many of the films are so similar. Uh, there's not that much variety, unfortunately. You know, it's five films open every week. Those five films show at all the mall cinemas. You've seen one, you've seen most of them. And I think it is important never to underestimate your audience, but to educate your audience and to challenge your audience in the hope that you can keep the medium of film alive. The Labia used to draw very much what I call a sort of a pensioner audience. In other words, an older crowd, and the product was very much aimed at an older crowd. An English comedy, for example, was, was the perfect film. 
Lord Beer since has become a lot younger and a lot cooler. Um, well, it was kind of our first date this year, <laughs> except a few friends tagged along, but yeah, that would be our first official date. So. Uh, I think the fact that we have so many film-related events, uh, also film festivals, horror film festivals, surfing film festivals, uh, that we are actually drawing more and more of the younger people and that they're now finding this a cool place to come to movies. They're not put off by the fact that it's an art cinema. People have this conception of art that it has to be a five-star movie, that it's impossible to comprehend what's going on in the movie and that there's no entertainment value. The films that we program here are films, yes, they do have artistic merit, but also have commercial appeal. Um, I like the sort of informal setting of it all. And, uh, you know, you wander in and it's quite low-key and it's easy to just pop in and sort of old style. I've been coming here for many, many years, at least 30 years. <laughs> a, a lot of the uh, tourists, uh, when they do come to Cape Town, do come here. It's, it's quite interesting. People walk past, they see the name, they immediately draw the wrong conclusion. They, they say, oh, is this a porn cinema? And we say, no, sorry, it's an art house. I don't know if they're happy or, or displeased. But we do get a lot of uh, foreigners and people from outside the Western Cape do come here. And even people within Cape Town, it always surprising, it surprises me that they come from Paul and Stellenbosch and Somerset West, that they actually prepared to come from so far to, to see a movie. Digital actually opens a whole new window, particularly for us. It's of course interesting uh, at the Labia, we've never had the privilege of having new equipment. We've always had to do with used equipment. But the film equipment that we had was always old, it always lagged behind the sort of equipment that you would experience in a major a cinema. But at the Labia, we've virtually come from the dark ages. We've skipped the best of film, we skipped the present, and we've gone digital. So here, it's, it's a drastic step. Having said that, not only is, is it a huge step forward in presentation, the picture's much brighter, the sound is much clearer, but it also opens an opportunity uh, for far more accessible and uh, product, and accessible product that's also more readily available. We hope through digital that we can share in far more day and date releases. So not only does it provide more product locally, but it also gives us the opportunity to easily import a product from overseas. You're no longer importing 25 kilograms of film reels, you're now importing a, a little hard drive. We don't intend interfering with the history and the ambience. I think that's a vital component of the Labia. That makes the Labia different. So whilst we have no choice to uh, upgrade uh, technically, in other words, from film to digital, we don't intend to upgrade the old world atmosphere. All we want to do is maybe re-upholster the seats, make them a bit more comfortable. So we like to rejuvenate what we have, maybe a bit of paint here or there. So re rejuvenate the existing without interfering with, with the history and the ambience of the venue. when I was still in primary school. A classmate of mine's father was, was a manager at the cinema. And then after school, we used to go, you know, around to the cinema. I used to run straight upstairs to the projection booth. And I thought, wow, you know, I saw the projectors running, the noise of the projectors, you know, the t -t 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 -t, you know, it just amazed me. It just caught my attention and I was like really into it. So projectionist then, saw me in the booth and he said, what are you doing here? Get out of here, you're not supposed to be in here. And I ran down the stairs. Next day I was here again, until he just got tired of me and he accepted me in his booth and um, that was my introduction to film. Where I grew up, we were like exposed to spaghetti westerns, you know, and um, karate movies, 
So that's basically all we saw. Spaghetti westerns in karate movies and the odd flash golden. The first movie I screened and saw here was Zone de Florette. And uh, I watched a little bit of this movie and I said, what the hell is this? How can people still watch it? And we've, we had a cinema, it was like packed to capacity. And I was wondering why are these people sitting here wasting their money on movies like this, you know? I didn't know that type of movies, you know? And I said, no man, I'm not going to watch this, this is, you know, rubbish. And then I had nothing else, to, I had nothing to do, I was just sitting waiting for movies to finish. So when I just went inside the cinema and I sat down and I watched. I thought, ah, maybe I'm gonna fall asleep there and have a nice nap, you know. And then I started watching the film and I caught interest, you know. And uh, I thought, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is, this is something else, you know. This is magic because what I'm seeing there is what's happening every day, you know, this is real life. What I've seen before, that, that's not real life, that is make-believe, you know, that's entertainment, this is real life. And that's how I discovered art house movies, like they say, you know, and ever since I'm hooked. The projectors I work with, okay, they like, um, the one is about 40, 40 years old and they've all been modernized, you know, to, to take the big reels that we use now. We get the foam, it's in like six different cans. Then what I have to do is I have to take it out, see whether it's on the beginning or the end, and then I have to splice it together with my little splicer. Okay, I take off all the leaders and I splice it together. And that's, that's what I love, to, you know, the f feel of foam on my fingers, you know. And after I've spliced it, depending on whether it's head, or out, head out or tail out, then I have to rewind it. Then I have to load it on the projector. Once it's ready, then I can start my movie. Everything is going, going digital very soon. Like I believe in South Africa, in a year, within a year's time, everything is going digital. And uh, projectors are going to become obsolete, you know. And uh, that like really saddens me because I've been working with these kind of things, projectors for, I won't call them things because I have a passion for them. So they are projectors, they have a name. One day they're going to be worth nothing. They're going to maybe stand in a museum or end up on a rubbish dump, you know. It's, it, as you can see, I'm, I'm very emotional about these things, you know. I spend more time with these projectors that I spend with my family, you know. So I take those projectors as my family because I spend more time with them than my own family. I didn't, I hardly saw my kid, he's 17 years old now. I hardly saw him grow up, but I would, I'm with those projectors every single day. I know what the ailments are. <laughs> I know just by listening to them, just by listening to these projectors, if anything is gonna go wrong with it. I can hear, I can listen. My ear is strained with this noise. Any slight noise that's different, I know, ah, it needs a bit of oil, or a gear is going, or, you know? I just know something is gonna happen because I'm with them, uh, you can say 12, 13 hours a day. I would love to take one home, you know? I would like to have it in my living room. <laughs> just as a showpiece, you yeah. know? And I've got my eye, my eye on one, I've got my favorite projector. I like to see the scratch, you know, or the line running through the foam, or, you know. Then I know I'm watching celluloid, you know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna have a job. That's what worries me. Because if it goes digital, they don't need a projectionist. There's not gonna be any foams for me to load on the projector. There's not gonna be any projectors to oil, do sound checks, mirrors to clean. So, no form to be made up, no form to be spliced. So I don't think it's going to be a job for me. This is all I can do, projecting form, you know.
I don't know anything else. I don't know what I'm going to do. Most uh, uh, employees at the lobby have been here a very, very long time. I mean, longer than I have been here. One projection has been here for over 30 years. Our head Asherette has been here for 30 years. For many of the staff, the lobby is like a second home, if not a first home. I think they would be lost without it. I've decided that I'm going to keep uh, every single projectionist here, that we're going to keep the staff. I'd rather pay a little bit more, but it is their home and it deserves to continue as their home.